the powerful F-22 Raptor is the future of air warfare. This fighter, which is known for being stealthy and having cutting-edge features, has completely changed the rules of military flight. Even though it costs a lot, it is still the most wanted fighter jet, which makes the US even more of an air power leader. But what makes this new Raptor different? What makes it the most dangerous plane in the sky? Come with us as we look into the new 2024 F-22 Raptors features that have everyone talking. There's more to the F-22 Raptor than meets the eye. It has characteristics that no other plane has, making it the most feared. Before it went into regular service in December 2005, the plane took its first flight in 1997, under different names such as F-22A. As for the F-22AA, ever since it started flying, the plane has been the best in the sky because it was so efficient and could shoot down any plane that tried to challenge it. This fighter jet is a brilliant piece of technology. After a long time of development and some early problems, this fighter became an important part of the U.S. Air Force's tactical air power. It will remain a mainstay of the fighter force until the next generation of air dominance fighters takes its place. But as long as it is still in use, no other fighter jet has even come close to being as advanced as this one. Because it is so quiet, radars have a hard time finding it, and its special qualities let it rule the skies. Because it is so fierce, this fighter can see a threat from miles away and hit it with an incredibly accurate aim. It's not a wonder that no one has ever shot down an F-22. Let's delve into the details of this formidable air fighter exploring its origins, construction methods, and the enhancements that bolstered its capabilities. The U.S. Air Force knew they needed a new fighter jet to replace the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon in 1981. The U.S. Air Force initiated the Senior Sky Project to develop a high-tech fighter plane capable of countering new Soviet threats. Some of these dangers included improved surface-to-air missiles, Soviet planes equipped with new radar systems, and advanced enemy fighters such as the Su-27 and MiG-29. In order to deal with these problems, the Air Force asked aircraft companies for their thoughts. These companies then put together a group to work on the technology for this new fighter plane. By 1983, this group had taken charge of the project at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base as the ATF System Program Office. In September 1985, after making their plans better and setting requirements, they asked several defense companies to send them bids. These ideas were mostly about how to make the new plane hard to see and able to fly fast for long distances. Over time, the standards changed. By December 1985, Stealth technology had received more attention. The Navy was also searching for a new plane, the NATF to replace its F-14 Tomcat. Due to the high cost of manufacturing this technology, various businesses collaborated to develop it. Lockheed and Northrop were finally picked. Lockheed worked with Boeing and General Dynamics in October 1986, while Northrop worked with McDonnell Douglas. Their first two planes were the YF-22 and YF-23, which they worked on for 50 months. They designed these planes not for racing, but to demonstrate the effectiveness of their designs. The Air Force also hired Pratt, Whitney, and General Electric to manufacture engines for the new planes. In 1987, the Lockheed team redesigned their plane to reduce weight during construction. To make sure the plane met all the standards, they used high-tech tools such as computer simulations and tests in a wind tunnel. To save money, they also made changes, such as getting rid of some tracking systems and making the ejection seats less good. Each team made two prototypes, one for each type of engine. Before afterburners, the YF-22 flew for the first time in September 1990 and showed that it could go fast. After tests, the Air Force picked Lockheed's plan in April 1991 because it was cheaper and easier to make. When it came to speed and stealth, the YF-23 was better. But the YF-22 was easier to control and less dangerous. Later, the Navy ended the NATF program because it was too expensive. But the Air Force's new fighter, the F-22 Raptor, became one of the most advanced planes in the world after it started flying and took part in big tests to make sure it was ready for missions. In January 2007, as part of Operation Noble Eagle, the fighter made its first mission to protect the homeland. In November 2007, several F-22S from the 90th Fighter Squadron at Elmendorf AFB Alaska 
shot down two Russian 295 ms bombers as part of the North American Aerospace Defense Command. Since then, F-22S have also flown with Russian 2160 bombers in similar situations. The 27th Jet Squadron sent this jet to Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan, for the first time outside of the United States in February 2007. However, this initial launch encountered numerous issues when six F-22S, departing from Hickam AFB in Hawaii, experienced multiple system failures due to software issues while crossing the international border. They had to return to Hawaii with the assistance of tanker planes. Luckily, they quickly fixed the problem within 48 hours, which let the trip go on. F-22 units started to regularly rotate through Kadena Air Base. They also participated in training drills in South Korea and Malaysia to speed up deployment and reduce the risk of conflict with peers or near peers. The U.S. Air Force came up with the idea of the Rapid Raptor, which includes sending out two to four Fs to help with logistics. The U.S. Air Force put this idea to the test on Wake Island in 2013 and on Guam at the end of 2014. Nevertheless, after Russia took over Crimea in 2014, the U.S. Air Force performed more tests at different bases in Europe in August and September 2015. Later, the U.S. Air Force utilized the Rapid Raptor's ideas to develop a new operational concept known as Agile Combat Employment, emphasizing distributed and austere operations during peer wars. Why is the F-22 so unique and sought after? Let's talk about the specifics. The Raptor, also known as version 647, represents the next generation of fighter jets. Not only is it highly advanced, but it's also the first plane with supercruise, which means it can fly really fast without using afterburners. It also has advanced electronics, super maneuverability, and super stealth. These traits help it stay alive and finish tasks, especially in places where there are a lot of enemies. The plane's shape makes it both quiet and excellent at flying. Radar can't pick up on the jet because its wings have a unique shape with smooth edges, and its body and wings both have a sleek form. In contrast to older planes, this one has flaps and rudders, among other control surfaces, that allow it to turn quickly. The F-22 has a distinctive body and wing shape, as well as a unique way of hiding weapons inside its body so that scanners can't find them. It also features a refueling boom, foldable landing gear, and an escape tail hook for safety. Two Pratt and Whitney F-119 turbofan engines, positioned close to each other and equipped with movable exhaust nozzles, power the Raptor. Each engine is controlled by a computer system, and when the plane is fully loaded for battle, they can make a lot of power. Its unique air intakes keep its weight and speed in balance, which makes it very agile. The fighter can move very fast. Without extra fuel, it can reach Mach 1.8, and when the afterburners activate, it can surpass Mach 2. Flying fast and high enhances the performance of its sensors and weapons, making it more difficult to hit rockets aimed at the ground. It can also fly faster than sound without using afterburners, which makes it even more special since other fighters need combustion engines to go that fast. The F-22's internal gun carriage reduces drag, enabling it to outperform other existing fighter jets. The fighter can fly at Mach 1.2 at 52,000 feet thanks to its design and powerful engine. This means that air-to-air -air weapons and bombs can reach farther than on previous U.S. Air Force planes. Strong materials like titanium and composites, which can withstand the stresses of flying at supersonic speeds, make up its frame. The Raptor stands out from other attack jets due to its ability to fly undetected. The Raptor's carefully shaped body reflects, scatters, or absorbs radar waves, making it difficult for radar to detect. The Raptor's concealed weapons and use of special materials to block radio waves further enhance its stealth. It's also harder for enemies to find the fighter jet because it makes less radio waves, heat, and noise. It's hard to say how well the stealth feature really works, though, because it only works against certain types of radar that other planes use. On the other hand, early warning radars or weather radars are easier to spot. But because they are so small, these radars aren't always accurate and can get thrown off by other sounds. Even if the defenders see a stealth plane on radar, it's hard for them to properly track and attack it. There is a special system on board the plane that puts together data from all of its sensors. This makes it easy to fly and helps the pilot see what's going on around them. 
the electronic warfare system, the missile launch detector, the radar communication navigation recognition system, and an infrared sensor that can find things far away are all important systems. The F-22's APG-77 radar is unique because it can track more than one target in any weather condition. It can also send signals that confuse enemy devices. To make it hard for enemies to find it, the radar changes its readings very quickly. It can find things anywhere from 125 to 150 miles away, or even farther in narrow bands. You can also use a better radar to map the ground, track moving targets, and assist with hits. The AAELR-94 electronic warfare system is one of the most complicated parts of the plane. It is located next to the antenna. It has more than 30 microphones spread out all over the plane, so it can pick up threats from everywhere. It can locate objects even farther away than radar and provide the pilot with enough information to lock onto them. Depending on the threat, the technology can tell the pilot to use countermeasures like flares or chaff to throw off enemy missiles. The fighter also has other sensors, like the MLD which can pick up infrared signals coming from any direction, and the improved IRST which is a sensor on the wing that can find and target things that are far away. Inside the Raptor, there are modern digital flying instruments. The main screen is a head-up display that shows important flying data. They also have six color screens that display more detailed information. The plane is controlled with a side stick device and throttles. At first, the Air Force thought about using voice commands to handle things, but they decided not to because it was too dangerous. The structure, known as the roof, is large and weighty. We had to redo the first version because it didn't last as long as it should have. The controls have a keypad for entering communication and navigation data, as well as working with the plane's radio devices. There are also small screens that show flight details and warnings. The air fighter uses the main screen for movement, while other screens handle tactical information and weapon management. That way, the air fighter's communication device can stay hidden. It only sends signals in certain directions. F-22S can talk to each other more easily thanks to a special data link. It also has a method that keeps it from hitting the ground. Many Air Force planes use the normal ejection seat on the F-22. It has a special button in the middle for ejecting. The jet also has a complex system to protect the pilot's life. This includes making oxygen on board, protecting clothes, and having a valve that controls airflow to the pilot's mask and clothing to stop G-forces and keep the right pressure. The clothes also keep you safe from chemicals, cold water, and high and low temperatures. After some issues with pilots not getting enough oxygen, the system was made better by adding a backup oxygen supply and a new valve to the pilot's vest for when they are in battle. A modified M4 rifle gives the ejection seat the tools it needs to stay alive. On the fighter, there are three secret gun locations, one big one under the plane and two smaller ones on the sides near the engines. Small spaces for defense-related items like flares are also located behind the side pockets, Long-range missile launchers can fit in six of the big compartments in the middle. Short-range missile launchers can fit in one of each of the side compartments. The main weapons used are the AIM-120A MRAAM and the AIM-9 Sidewinder. We are also planning to add the AIM-260JATM. When it's time to launch the missiles, the arms quickly open the sections and push them out. To avoid detection, the plane swiftly opens its compartments and initiates high-speed jumps. The right wing of the plane hides a 20mm gun, and the pilot's screen shows the cannon's firing path. Even though the main compartment is mostly for rockets, it can also hold up to 2,000 pounds of bombs. It can carry GPS-guided bombs, but it can't aim laser-based weapons on its own. The fighter usually keeps its weapons inside, but each of its four strong points on its wings can hold up to 5,000 pounds. These points can hold things like rocket launchers or fuel tanks. The first two points design makes room for fuel tanks, and the last two points design adds special pods to hold the plane's systems. If necessary, the plane can drop its external tanks to maintain its speed and performance, as well as ensure that the fighter is always ready to go. An F-22 requires proper servicing every 300 hours of flight, a process that typically takes three weeks. Despite being stronger than those on older stealth aircraft, the coatings failed during the 2009 fighter jet transfer to Guam due to their inability to withstand the rain and moisture. Repairs take a significant amount of time to maintain the F-22's stealthiness. 
the coatings need extra care. Researchers are working on tougher coatings to simplify maintenance. Most of the fighter's repair work takes place at the Ogden Air Logistics Complex at Hill AFB, Utah, USA. Very few F-22S are available, so they have to be very careful when they are maintaining the fighter. They also don't have anyone to fall back on if something goes wrong. In 2015, compared to their initial introduction in 2005, F-22S were ready for mission 63% of the time. By 2009, the repair time needed for each flying hour had gone down from 12 hours to 10.5 hours, an improvement from 30 hours. People put in 43 hours of work for every hour of flight in 2014. Initially, the F-22 required repairs every 1.7 hours rather than the anticipated 3.0 hours. It went up to three and a half hours by 2012. In fiscal year 2015, it cost a 59,000 or $160 billion to fly for an hour. The Raptor's design, on the other hand, is better than those things because new upgrades have made it much faster. In Dayton, Ohio, the US Air Force and Lockheed Martin are beginning the second step of updating the F-22 fleet every year. They are getting ready to make changes to the software and do quick upgrades that will lay the groundwork for maintaining future planes. It costs a lot to keep the F-22 up to date, even though the Air Force plans to retire it once the secret next-generation air dominance tool is ready. In fiscal year 2024, the USAF set aside $3.5 billion for research, development, testing, and review of the fleet. Over the next five years, they plan to spend $19.5 billion. The Air Force Life Cycle Management Center's Program Executive Officer for Fighters and Advanced Aircraft is in charge of these projects. Dale White said that these efforts are very important to make sure that the F-22 can still fight threats now and in the future. He also told reporters that the improvements made to the jet would help the creation of new technologies such as NGAD. After completing a significant upgrade to the F-22 in 2020 2021 Lockheed Martin and the Air Force have shifted their focus to a new method known as the Raptor Agile Capable Release Program. This upgrade is referred to as Increment 32B. Lockheed Martin finished the first part in 2022. Its goal was to update the jet's hardware so that it could send data over Link 16. We recently accepted Race CR2, a software modification program, and are now implementing it as the second phase of the upgrade. We expect the third phase, or release three, to arrive approximately 12 to 18 months after the second phase. The United States, Air Force, and Lockheed are also experimenting with the F-22's low drag tanks and pylons to make it longer range. The second step, which includes installing Racker Release 2, will come before these changes, though. Lockheed will also implement these changes as part of the $10.9 billion Advanced Raptor Enhancement and Sustainment deal. Thank you for watching. Click on the link on your screen. See you then.